show a little up. Different uh, perspective for the background and maybe just turn the camera a tiny bit in Y. I can really um, turn my car, the foreground car around. I can, I can really choose which way we're looking and um, that made everything really easy by just adjusting those little parameters to get the vanishing point right and to really have the car um, drive down the roads in a straight way. Now let's go back to the 3D scene then. So these are the nodes that we use for that. This is just the motion that we exported from our previs because we wanted the car to uh, travel exactly the same path as we had in the previs. You see the little axis here? We play back our animation and look from the top. It looks something like that. And you can see that the projection cameras are moving down the street and the axis, once the car hits the truck, starts spinning just the way it did in our previs. There it goes, it starts spinning across the intersection and now it stops looking right at the gas station. So this is really just from, uh, I think, 3ds Max, the exported movement of our previous car to have it exactly the way the director approved it already. Um, and then we're adding the in-car camera animation on top of that so that we have the in-car track camera attached to the car that's driving down the street. This was our post-vis that we did after we shot the car crash sequence on uh, the intersection. Just to check the timing again, to see if everything will work out. We had this approved as well by the director, and we knew exactly by that time what the lighting in the studio had to look like and the timing for the whole sequence. There you go. So that's the rough preview. You see the, the camera on the interior uh, of the car looking down panning down on everything that's on the outside of the car. Then we did some lighting reference. We shot a gray ball on um, the dashboard of a car and retimed the shot in order to match the timing of our post vis car on the right exactly. So that way we just set up the same gray ball on this stage in the studio and that way we could really see how the street lights affect the interior of the car. They're the same timing. And we had this little animation, it was kind of funny, um, to give all the lighting crew and the people in the studio their cue for their lights. So on the left and right side, the white bars, that's just the street lights. Um, the more they're inside the frame, the brighter it should be inside the car on stage. Now we start driving on the intersection. Now we hit the truck and now we stop. Uh, so we had to do a couple of takes, but in the end, I think we had about six frames offset of the foreground plate timing to um, what we needed for our background to work. So this is the studio shot, the final finished studio shot. We did some post camera work to it. Now he's driving over the intersection, bam, hits the truck, spins around, stops, that's it. And we also, because right here, you can see him, that it's, that it's his own, uh, that he's throwing himself into the steering wheel at that point. So we, we removed a couple of frames there in order to really make, it, make him fly. So now that we have the foreground plate, there were a couple of elements missing. Um, for example, when you shoot on a studio and you have your engine turned off, um, usually you don't have any illumination in your dashboard, for example. But we, we had already uh, the whole 3D track for the interior of the car, so we could just take some elements that we shot, like this, for example. Then we just attached that. And within five minutes, we had this little slider here where you could just animate the way the car behaved and how fast he was going. Putting all that into a little 3D setup with our 3D track, you end up having something like that. And of course, because we did it all in Nuke, we ended up having a very consistent Z-depth pass that we could use for defocusing. 
Um, we wanted to have the focus in the beginning of the shot uh, with our main character. And in the end, um, of course, when you see the truck approaching, you want to pull your focus to, to look straight at the truck and defocus your foregun. So we had a very consistent Z-depth pass. Uh, we had all the motion vectors that we needed to do um, the spinning of the car on the intersection. Because we had all the cracks in the windshield to do, and of course, um, the hood flying up and um, trash flying around in the car, that were all like, um, the trash was a rigid body simulation. We deformed the, the hood um, by hand and animated it manually. And to do something to light it um, was of course another issue because either we would be relighting everything manually by hand again, or we could just render out um, the spinning of the car on our intersection from Nuke as a spherical panorama as an HDR sequence, plug that into Mental Ray, and then have our simulation take place, and you would always have a consistent